Morning, everybody. As I said in the introduction, since we are in the last week of the liturgical year, we should not be surprised about the theme and the tone of the readings during this week. Now, today's gospel is uh, very vivid and also very stark. So when Jesus is asked about what are the signs, Jesus gives us a very vivid picture of what it might look like. Nation will rise against nation, kingdoms against kingdom. There will be powerful earthquakes, famines, and plagues from place to place, and awesome sights and mighty signs will come from the sky. It's also very stark as the people were adorning, sorry, admiring the beautiful temple and of course buildings and structures, these, these represent culture, isn't it? I mean, we are proud of what human beings have accomplished uh, over the generations. But Jesus says all that you see here and now particularly for the people who were looking at the temple, the temple in so many ways represented God and eternity. All that you see here, Jesus says, the days will come when there will not be left a stone upon another stone that will not be thrown down. And this came to pass. 70 AD, the Romans came and destroyed the temple and Luke is writing after the destruction of the temple. So in many ways, what Jesus prophesied actually came to be true. So then we have a very vivid and a very stark image that Jesus paints for us. And having been these now the last 10 months living a pandemic i mean things like this are so um so real for us we know what this looks like we know what destruction looks like we know what a plague looks like we know like a, we know what a pandemic looks like isn't it so i'm not sure if this reading really helps us however let me point to what jesus is saying when these things happen and i think that's where the good news is so Jesus has two pieces of advice for us as we live these days. First, do not be deceived. And why? Because no human person, no human authority can replace the gospel. Listen, folks, it's very, very, very simple. If we are a people that keeps our eyes focused on the gospel, and if the gospel is what guides us, then the chances of us being deceived is, is, is very minimal. It's only when we think that, that either a human person or any human authority or nation or a military power or these things can't save us. They may protect us, but they can't save us. And so what we need to make sure is, is, is to remain focused and not be deceived. And we've seen that in recent times where we, we think of people as, as, as almost being savior figures in, in, and, and Jesus says, don't be deceived. Secondly, don't be terrified. Such things must happen. Like what? The cross, for example. Such things must happen. But when the cross happened, salvation happened. And so when everything around us begins to dissipate, we must remember that God is still under control. That God is still our destiny. That our faith and our hope must lie in God alone. So yes, pandemics can happen. So yes, one day everything that we know will not be there. And yes, we know that everything will disappear. But in those moments, those who have their faith set on the gospel will find redemption and salvation come in a more real way. 
So I want to share a story with you from yesterday that is still, is still um, stirring my, my soul, but uh, I was invited yesterday to give the sacraments for the last time to a darling woman, I think she's in her 80s, who was, uh, who was on her deathbed, but she also had COVID most probably from the facility where she was at. She had, um, her, her husband had passed away just a week back. He had cancer, but then he also contracted COVID, so it hastened his, his demise. In any case, so now, when I went to hospice, and here's this, here's this woman just lying uh, completely unconscious, and I don't know what happened at that point, but suddenly she regained her consciousness. And she looked at me, and she looked at the family member that was present there. She asked where she was. I said, you're in Dayton. I said, can I pray with you? And I said, sure. And boy, she folded her hands. And when I made the sign of the cross, she made the sign of the cross. She stayed with me probably about a minute or two, and after I had anointed her, she went once again, slipped into this very deep sleep. And such, that is such a perfect image for today's gospel reading. Yeah, death is going to happen. But when it happens, what are the chances that God is really present right there in a way that I could not have imagined? It was a great story of God's presence in the midst of darkness, God's life in the midst of death, God's, uh, God's light in the midst of darkness. It's real. Folks, it's real. Let us not be deceived. Let us not be terrified. God has got us covered. Amen. Just an announcement today. Um, at 7 o'clock, um, and this, 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 this came to me in prayer this morning, but at 7 o'clock this evening, I'm inviting as many people as possible to spend an hour with me in prayer. So we will live stream a adoration and also uh, the rosary towards the end. It's at 7 o'clock. So if you want to join me today, um, it's for all the healthcare workers. It's, fed, it's for families that are struggling with COVID. There are family members who are praying for their loved ones. And it's also for a safe holiday weekend for the entire nation. So join me in, this, in, in these intercessions at 7 o'clock this evening at the same live stream that you are watching uh, from home right now. And for those of you who have been with us on live stream and are present here, you're welcome to join uh, in our live stream as well. So 7 o'clock this evening, let's gather together in prayer.